Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Seth Servers, a video here today, bringing you guys a video where my voice is shot, by the way. Um, bring you guys the perfect Twitch panels for your Twitch panels. Yeah, we're going with that. So with that being said, hopefully you guys will learn in today's video how to make your own nice, cool Twitch panels in the style that I actually chose for today's video. And uh, yeah, it's just a really fun idea and it's kind of like style and a way to kind of put your typography in one place, puts a little information in another place, put some icons in there, cool blur ideas. And of course, the way to make these even more yours is change the colors. So for me, I use the black background for the actual remainder of the tutorial, right? And I use like a nice goldish kind of color for the actual secondary color. You guys can change your background color, whatever you need to be. A purple with gradient. Uh, uh, your secondary color could be doesn't have to be gold. Just don't forget the more elements you add is more of part of your brand. If you have, if you use like hearts, if you use cats, if you use dogs, add some dog cat emotes or dog and cat icons and make it yours. Of course, don't forget that is the main point is I do one style that it can basically be manipulated into whatever style that you need it to be. So with that being said, hope you guys do enjoy this video. Hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. And uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a like on it and just make the video, just help out the video a little bit and subscribe and all that good stuff. So uh, enjoy, that's all I got, peace. All right guys, so let's go and get this thing started right here, right now, how to make your perfect Twitch panel. So what we're gonna do over here first is go to file, new, and make sure we have our dimension size at 500 by 500 with 300 resolution, which I think is a really good default uh, panel size, right? Press create. So one thing immediately I want to say to yourselves is right on the background area over here, usually something like a dark gray or maybe like you have it on light gray. Make sure you guys click on the right click on the gray area, right? Choose select custom color and make sure you guys type in on this little box right here, uh, 0 e 0 e 1 0 that'll put in the same black as twitch and I'll make sure when you're doing your twitch panel It looks most likely accurate to the colors and like the blending all that good stuff to like what's gonna look like on twitch Because if you guys do it on a white background or a dark gray and you have a certain color scheme It might not look as accurate and well or good if you don't change your color scheme Make sure you're actually designing for a certain program or a certain platform. Okay, so with that being said though Let's get this thing started again. So, rectangle tool, okay? So for the record, I think your default will be like at a weird like thing, but make sure you guys click on your stroke over here, this little box, and click this little uh, arrow, or sorry, this box with a little red mark down it. That basically says, hey, that is no color, we're turning it off. So, click on your stroke, turn it off just like so, mine is already off, okay? But of course, the fill color, we have to change that too. So with this fill color here, I'm gonna change this color on the top right right here, this little box, and then we just wanna basically make a color of any color, press okay and uh, we're set and we're good to go, okay? So now with the tool, I can click on the corner, right? And I'll just say, move this down here. And now of course you can see this little yellow or this little blue line right here, right? Look at my mouse. I'm not going all the way down here. This is basically a nice default panel size. I'm not gonna use the entire canvas size. I'm gonna move my mouse up a little bit, about 25% of the way. Okay, I'm gonna say right here, I think is a really good spot. Let go and now I have my box all good and go. And the reason why I use this and not a rectangle marquee tool is with the rectangle tool itself, you can see while you're highlighted on the actual rectangle tool and you have the rectangle tool out as well, or rectangle tool layer and you have the rectangle tool out as well, little circle right here will pop up. These little circles basically curve your rectangle really easily. It was a Photoshop feature or uh, Illustrator feature at first, now they moved it to Photoshop, bless up, because what you can do is you can click on it, hold and move it toward the middle, you'll see it basically curves. It makes it look a nice little really simple curve. We don't have to like cut it out with circles anymore, anything like that. So if I go over here, I'm not gonna do a super hard curve. I'm gonna do like a nice skinny curve, about 20, 23%, all right? Just like so, and if I let go, you'll see a nice little curve in my rectangle now, okay? So what I wanna do now is make a new layer, right click, clip and mask this layer onto this new layer right here, and change my foreground color to pure black, okay? Pure black, use a brush, Okay, it doesn't matter what size it is, just make sure you can basically color it in. Because what you're gonna do really quick is take your brush and literally color in your rectangle, right? We're basically, we're basically making our own gradient. Um, that's kind of like all we're doing. So that's why I'm using a brush and the gradient tool because I think it looks a little bit better and what we have to do afterwards, it's gonna make more sense, okay? So with that first layer is black, we're gonna make another new layer. Right click, clip mask it again. And for this layer here, I'm gonna basically use a grayer tone. So of course, this is pure black. If I move this up to about like 191919, Right, if I click OK, this is more of a grayer tone, right? So it's a pretty good, nice kind of tone right here. Not too like harsh. We don't want to go too gray where, where you're like up here. That's a no-no. We were going to use that for the third one, by the way. But use like a nice mid-tone kind of gray. Click over here on the left-hand side. I'll click over here as well and on the bottom. Just kind of make it just simple one clicks, right? I basically said to myself, hey, click right here, click right here, and then I click right here to make a nice little simple gray. Kind of hits around, okay? Now for this third layer, right click, Layer, uh, clip mask this, of course. <clears throat> and this one is the one we're gonna actually use a nice, kind of like a gray that's like 5D, 5D, 5E, or 5E, 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 
press OK. And then for this one, we're going to click once over here. Uh, let's say like a little bit up here as well. And then like down here, kind of like a little curve, like right there. Is that too much? That might be a little bit too much. I might say to myself, move this eraser from a little bit on that side, move it eraser a little bit on this side. And then I say that's a pretty good amount. So you kind of see my gray hits are more like located right here and right here. That's pretty much what you want to kind of have, okay? So <clears throat> with this third layer now, I'm going to go to where it says filter and go to where it says noise and click on add noise and make sure my amount is at 0.8 Gaussian. <clears throat> Gaussian, Jesus Christ, my voice is shot, bro. Press OK. And of course, if you guys zoom in for this right now, you'll see a little layer. Layer three will actually have a little bit of a noise on it now. It looks really clean, really cool little style choice here. Now, of course, you don't want the noise. You don't, need, you don't even need the noise. But also, if you don't want the black, you can just change the black to whatever color you want as well, by the way. Just make the same gradients kind of like go up or more and more brighter every single time you make a new color. But for this, right, the gray looks really, really nice now. If you want to add a little more noise, you could. I would say like maybe like a little bit more. Like, no, 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 no. I lied. I lied. That's perfect. Point A is perfect. Okay. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and actually focus on the actual type for a second. Okay. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to write the word subscribe. This is basically the word of whatever the panel you guys are designing first. So if I'm doing this subscribe panel, this word will be subscribe like it is right now. I don't need this clip mask by the way either. This can be free floating on its own. I'm going to be using impact font because it's very simple. Everyone has it and it looks really good if you guys do the right color combination. And for color, actually, I'm going to use the same gold from over here. I'm going to steal that for a second, right? This gold color that I'm using is basically E3C66E. Now, if you want to choose that color, have the gold set for yourselves as well and just move the hue bar here. That'll give you guys a really good tone for, I think, what the uh, the background black and style choice we have here will look really good in my opinion, okay? So Control-T to phrase transform, make it pretty big, okay? We want that hierarchy to be set on the word subscribe, okay? Hold Alt, Shift, drag it up to make a duplicate of it. And for this one, we're going to put the words um, click here to, okay? This will be in all capital letters. <clears throat> We're going to shrink this down to a nice small subtext font because this is basically our call to action. We're going to say, hey, click here to subscribe and we'll name off some things that you get here if you want to name off perks or even like a nice simple two sentence thing, the word to say um, to basically have people interested in subscribing. OK, so with this one, we're not going to use the same impact font. We're going to use stretch sans free, um, which is a free font, by the way, or just any basically really cool, like more elongated subtext style font. I would say the word impact or the font impact is more of like a heading font. This is definitely a sans serif kind of like, like subtext font. Okay. Right. So with this, I'll make this a little more smaller. Then I'm going to change the color for whatever, whatever this yellow is to a nice little kind of like offset yellow. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take the same yellow that we have on the word subscribe or whatever color you're, you're working with, by the way, just take whatever that little circle is right here, move it toward the top left. And just like this, we get a nice little offset white. So it's not pure white. If you zoom in, right, it's not pure white. It's like a nice offset white, right? With a little bit of yellow tint on it. Looks really good. So if you have a purple, you basically move it from your purple to whatever, whatever it is here. Just move it up toward here. That'll give you guys a more offset purple. But if you want to move it even further up, I'll move it even further up for the more offset purple. Okay. So with that being said, now we have our nice little subtext. We have our heading. And now I'm going to do the little divider. Okay. So divider, I'll make a new layer. We're going to use the rectangle marquee tool this time, not the actual tool itself. If, I mean, you can use either one, to be honest with you. Right. Hold, click, hold alt and drag toward the right hand side. Going to make a nice little shape right there. And for this one, we're going to basically click on the background and we're going to use a nice gray, a little bit lighter than the lightest tone gray that you have. Then you can either right click, fill, drop down, use color, and then put your gray kind of hex code in here. But you saw me already click over here in the fork and color and change it so I can do now for myself. I can press alt backspace to quickly fill it in if I wanted to. Right now I have my gray all set in there and the alt backspace, uh, how do you say? What that does is basically takes your foreground color that you have over here and basically puts it in whatever selection you guys are using. Okay. So with that being said, that's set right there. Now I have a little divider. I'll go to where I says icon eight. Icon eight is basically a plugin for Photoshop. Where you can just basically put in some icons really easily and fast. I'm going to change mine and put the word star in here. I'm going to use the same star icon, which is this little ticket thing right here. And it's really cool. Really simple, right? Press control I to switch your colors. Um, really quickly, I'll just make this shrink down. So I did that pretty quickly because it's really, really simple. If you guys want to type in in Google uh, star icon PNG, that's a really cool thing you can type in for Google and make you'll just get a whole bunch of PNG, hopefully, um, icons that already want to use, it's like crown PNG, uh, uh, star PNG. Can't, you guys get the point, okay? Right? And uh, all you got to do is change this color to whatever it is to so the nice offset white. This will basically be the same color from before you chose for the subtext. Okay, I'm going to double click on this. 
and then color overlay click over here and we'll make a nice little subtext kind of like offset white press ok press ok again and now it's not pure white it looks really good in my opinion now the thing is this same exact ticket or how do you say star uh like icon here i'm gonna make this a little bit wider a little just a little bit um the same thing over here i'm gonna make a duplicate of it by pressing ctrl j now i'm change my color because i'm gonna make it pure white Okay, when your icon is pure white, you can make it as big as you would like it to be. Of course, do not forget this little background white area, right? This is actually not used. We're not using this area. This is going to be transparent. I don't know if I made that clear or not, but this will basically be transparent. That's why we're only using the canvas of the rectangle that we made before in the first little thing we did as actually the, the canvas size in this, in this case, okay? So turn this off for a second just kind of so you don't get confused. Move your actual icon that's going to be really big and clip mask this to the actual icon or the actual a rectangle that you made in the beginning, right? Where all the colors and all the gradients are. Make sure you guys clip mask the icon to that itself. Now you guys will see it's not floating outside of the canvas. <clears throat> and with our white nice icon here, click just like so, change from blend more normal to overlay. And just like that, since we actually added some noise gray or gray noise on the gray, you'll see if we little see right here, nice little noise action right there. Looks really, really good. Now, also, if you guys are not already, make sure you guys right click and convert to a smart object. If it's not already a smart object, then, well, if it isn't, do it. If it is already, you're set, you're good to go. But make sure you guys click on a smart object because what you're gonna do next, you're gonna go to filter, filter gallery, iris blur, Clip it, keep it right in the middle. It doesn't really matter. If you guys are in the same vicinity as me, you can also move it if you guys really wish to, but I'm gonna keep it in the middle for myself. Change my blend amount. You just click on this little circle here, right? And just move it up to around like 20 or so percent. And then you can just go over here where it says okay on the top. Press that. And it'll give you a nice little iris blur on this icon. Now, since it's a smart, since it's now a smart object, if I were to alt drag to so duplicate really quickly, control T to free transform it, shrink it down a little bit, rotate it, make it a little more bigger, just like so, put it right here. Press enter. It'll add the same exact mount, uh, motion, excuse me, iris blur or blur amount right to the same icon, making it a lot faster for you guys to actually get to point A to point B. And it looks really good. So blur, I think it's more of like a stylistic choice, but I think it looks really cool for this case right here. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and now and type in a nice little subtext. So for me, I wrote, join our amazing community and access to awesome emotes and perks. I mean, I should put me put to have access or whatever you guys want to write. I'm not the best. I'm not an English major. I'm going to say, Hmm, what would I say? I'm going to say an all lowercase or like, I'm just going to make it the first, of course, one capital. So join our community to have access. Join our amazing. Oh God, this is terrible. Join our community and have access to all. I'm going to go ahead and press press enter to all the amazing perks and emotes. Exclamation point. Boom. I don't have the exclamation point on the stretch stance font, but we're not even going to use that. We're using it. I'm going to use Swiss International font. You guys can use whatever sans serif font you have. Even Arial might even work. I'll just use Arial just to show you guys that it could work. Okay. Using Arial on like bold. Make this a little bit bigger by pressing control T. Free transform it just like so. I'm not even going to say bold looking good. I think a regular is actually the way to go. Just like that. Move it a little bit further down. Right. And now we have a nice little subtext in there. Now, what I want to do now is for this rectangle, I'm going to take this alt, drag it all the way to the top, and I'm actually going to add in a nice little layer style on it. So if we do that, lower your fill down to 0%, that'll basically get rid of whatever's on the layer, but also keep it so that whatever layer size you put on it are still visible. Okay. Double click on this layer. And for this, I have a nice little style already set for myself. So for the stroke, I have it on one inner normal 100% opacity for the gradient though. On the left, I have a gray 191919. Right over here where you can just click on it. Just If this is gone, oops, if this was gone right here, you just click right where you guys saw mine at, right? And just click on this, double click on this. Change the same color, whatever you have the word subscribe. Whatever your word is that you choose the color scheme to actually go with the black, just click on that word, press OK, and that is your second color. And your third color is all on the right-hand side, 2A, 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 a nice little gray as well again. Press OK, and you'll see. If I press OK again, you can even add some satin at uh, pure black, multiply blend mode, 8, 90 degrees, 50 distance, 150 size, press OK. And just like this, if I do to turn this on and off, you'll see, or even make this background right here, not white, but I'll make the same color as the, the Twitch background color. But boom, now you can see it a lot easier if I turn it on and off. It's a very, very nice stroke that just looks really, really good to kind of house the actual, the whole thing and just make it look pretty, right? So the last but not least though, I'll make a new layer all right above this little star icon thing, right? Right click, clip mask it, use my brush, click on that same yellow, get that same exact color from the before. 
take your opacity to like 30% or so. I'm gonna click a few times right on the bottom right here and give myself a nice glow. And just like that, I think that it's pretty much exactly how I wanna have it. That's in my perfect panel. So to really quickly save this though, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off my background. That's the first thing I should do. Make sure your background is turned off. That way you guys see this little checker batter, checkerboard pattern that is basically saying to yourself or Photoshop that is actually transparent, right? Now, if I go over here to where it says file, export, save for web, okay? We're gonna take this blend mode, or excuse me, preset to uh, blend mode, preset to 20, uh, PNG 24, okay? And over here on the left-hand side, make sure that you're, of course, if you were to zoom in, make sure this is actually also checkerboard pattern. That is basically saying that it's for sure 100% transparent. Now, if it's not though, that means you don't have this box right here clicked, right? You see it's not clicked, it's pure white. That is not what we want. We wanna have this box, transparency box clicked. Now it's purely, purely transparent. We can press save, save it where I have to save it to, and we put it into Twitch, and we're all set, and we just gotta do this over and over and over again. But I would just basically say to myself, for the record, if you're, if you're trying to type with the stroke on that I just made for you guys, right, this little stroke thing, make sure you guys right click and convert to a smart object. Otherwise, every time you're gonna try to type, it's gonna like, go around the actual stroke and that's not what you want. Um, but basically what I would do for the record is change the word to donate, right? If you wanna change the color, you can change the color, whatever you wanna change it to, right? Of course, change the glow to whatever color you gotta change it to, control U, um, right, a blue, change the words or whatever, change the stroke color on the outside of the stroke from before, right? And that'll basically make it so that it's consistent style-wise, but just a different idea um, of just like, you know, color scheme, or even if you change the icons out, of course you want to change the icons out, or just added some more elements to it, make it your own style, things like that. Um, all that stuff is gonna make it, what's gonna make it more and more and more consistent and more fun. And of course you can even shrink the canvas by pressing uh, C on your keyboard, taking the canvas, moving it up, and then using the same exact kind of background and style idea, but just make things like for like, if you had to do like an about me section and you already wrote the about me section already, you put about me, that way it still has the same exact idea from before and all that stuff, right? So all panels are reusing the same one idea. That's why I only made one panel and just basically making it whatever size you need it to be. Um, and you're all pretty much good and set to go, but that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. Hopefully you guys made a nice, really cool, dope panel for yourselves and can take this, run with it, and uh, now your, your Twitch will look super professional, super dope. And just, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the panels that are just basically these little squares, it's kind of like dead. It's dead to, dead to me. That was the loud, loudest fucking motorcycle ever. Uh, it's dead to me. So it's kind of like this little rectangle thing. It's kind of the same exact thing over and over, over again. Everyone knows what you're clicking down in the panels for. So why don't you spice it up, put some more information in there, make it more personable to what your style is, and not just like, hey, putting panels there to put panels in. Make it your style, make it your idea, and um, that's it. Hope you guys do enjoy. Of course, subscribe if you guys haven't already. Leave a like in the video if it did help. And uh, that's all I got. Set some HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love, peace, and enjoy your streaming with your new panels and all that good stuff. Love you guys. Later.